Lord, we come before you with grateful hearts. And we just thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to come and worship you. We just pray the Holy Spirit will come and help us, Lord, to have a desire in our hearts to learn more about you and a desire to what we hear will be can spread to others around us. Help us, Lord, to know what you want us to do and where you want us to go and what you want us to say. We just lift this hour up for you. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll be in our midst and be with Pastor David as he speaks to our hearts and help us to listen and absorb all that you have for us to hear. We just want to thank you for this time. We just praise your holy name for being able to be here. We just thank you. Amen. Let's sing sometimes Alleluia. <laughs> Thank you. 
from Acts chapter 3, verse 22. For Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Father, help us to not just take this verse in our heart, but to live it, to listen to everything that you tell us in the book. You know, we look on TV, there's no truth. One side, other side, but in here is your truth. Help us to continue to be your loving children and your student and to learn your word and to take that word, not our own word, but our own word into this world that is just heavenly in need. Thank you for your love. Thank you for allowing us to come here and open up our hearts and praise you. And may we just continue to do that. We lift this all in your precious name, Lord.
let's end this side today, okay? No political thing intended, but I could get that. I just want to open with a moment of prayer here, Lord. There's Father, thank you this morning, Lord. We especially want to lift up the the Walters family, what happened in Florida. It sometimes makes you stop your breath and say, I don't know what to do here, Lord, but as we just sang about grace, would you extend grace to Brett and Mandy and, and the family, Lord? And would your love continue to flow to that other or that couple, Lord? For one of them has gone home, and there was a death in that injury, Lord. I can't make heads or tails of things sometimes, but I'm glad you can. And I think this is maybe for many in that family a crossroad moment, Lord. They need your love. They need your comfort. I don't think they need all the answers, Lord, but you'll give them to them. So be with them today. Be with that family who lost a loved one. Father, you are a great comforter. You are a great resource. You are the only answer sometimes. There's sometimes this pastor doesn't have it all together. I said, I have to rely on Jesus for that. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for blessing both families and help this family to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters, that they'll continue on through this. We just ask your precious name. Thank you. The brochures, like uh, I think Dawn said it best, get get two or three, make four or five copies. The four or five people you've been praying for the t- um, some of these will get inserted in a mailbox or in that. I guess you got to put it in the one below that, isn't it? Because the post office will get mad at you if you stick it in the mailbox. Does that still work that way in Silver Lake? I caught flack for that one time years ago. Um, we lived in a beautiful subdivision, but people sped through the subdivision. And I wanted to put a little speed bump there. You know, a little speed bump. So my heart was in the right place. So Kathleen and I printed out 400 brochures, and we ran around and put them in every mailbox. And I didn't know the legalities. Boy, did I catch flack. I was an enemy. I, almost, I didn't get death threats, but said, how dare you do that? And yet our hearts were good. We didn't want kids to get injured. So, again, don't stick them in the one mailbox. But, again, put these on a door. Um, I'll say one thing. Right now, as Dawn said, the Good Friday service at noon and 7. If I can touch base with a few of the pastors and I haven't been able to yet, they haven't got back, I'm willing to do something elsewhere there. So we'll let you know next week what's going on with that. If everything doesn't, then I'm still going to have a 12 o'clock to 1 service and a 7 to 8 service. Again, I want to do everything possible to open up. It's a very powerful weekend with our Lord. I want to open up as much. I don't expect you to go to every service, but I thought some are working that day, so why not open up an evening service? So we'll let you know the full um, details of that um, by next week. I've entitled this sermon Peter, and I always want to say first of all that Let's not forget that, you know, we could spend, I could spend every sermon talking about the love of God, the love of the Father, the love of Jesus, and that's certainly in this sermon. We don't want to put Peter above anybody else and get focused on a person. But I want to talk a little bit about Peter here um, and how we can be very similar to Peter. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about his life in in the context of a few minutes here, but... um, Anyway, I had a beautiful dream last night. I had a beautiful dream that this church was packed. Okay? And some of you say, yeah, pastor, that's going to happen. Spring people are going to come back. But that was my dream. And I woke up. And I don't know if that's an indicator, but I believe that. Uh, People will come back. But my prayer is always that they don't come back back because the weather's warmer or there's a new pastor or there's new things going. But they come back to the house of God to draw closer as we sung, that most important personal relationship, and that's Jesus Christ. And that's always on my heart. But I want to ask you a question as as we talk about Peter. What do you really expect when you come through these doors? And I'm not referring to, I expect another good sermon from Pastor, or um, I expect there to be chocolate out there, you know. (laughs) I expect... For people to say hi to me. I mean, what do you, what do you really expect? 
what what's on your heart as we go into this Easter season? What do you expect? Now, I'm not talking me or the people or the elders or the council. I'm not talking that. I'm talking. What do you expect to come and find from the Lord? Um, let's think of the healing service. We're going to do a 45-minute hour. It's a prayer service. We might anoint some, but do you expect to come in there and see a Jesus that can actually heal? Now, we may not see the physical healing. There may be a spiritual healing. There may be a healing down the road a year. Do you expect that, that, that Jesus can do that? Some will come in and say, well, I don't really believe that. And again, we're talking this first century church that is the same. We should expect that. Always knowing that God is in charge of everything. He has the best plan. He'll bless. He, he'll wait. He'll be patient. Um, when you come in here on Easter Sunday, do you expect to really spend time with a resurrected Jesus? Now, of course, you're saying, well, pastor, we all know this. He's resurrected anyway. So are you doing that today? You know, when I come here at 730 and the, I turn on just a few lights, I come and I spend a moment before that cross. I know, I have already, I know that the Father's there, the Son is there, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit is there. And you're saying, Pastor, well, he's with us in our heart. That's true. You know, there's sometimes, many churches today don't invite him into this building. And he's in our hearts, but we haven't invited him to take precedence of this church. When you came in here today, did you, did, you expect, did you expect a miracle? I can't answer that question. Did you expect a spiritual miracle? I think that's a personal thing you have to ask. What do you expect? No, I don't expect he can do that, and I don't expect to be resurrected. And, and again, if somebody's like that, that's just something I want you to take to prayer. I do expect that. And again, let, let me be careful what, when I say the word expect. I'm not demanding anything of my Lord and Savior because he's going to give us what we want and we need. And sometimes you've asked for things, and it didn't come. Sometimes it didn't come or it came in a different kind of path. So we're not saying we're, I'm demanding of Jesus, but I expect that my father's here. He's listening to me. I would expect that if if I go to the kneeler here in 30 minutes when we sing, that he's listening to my heart, whether I'm praising him or I'm sitting on his lap or I'm 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 expecting that. And I'm and I'm always blessed because that's the way I feel. So just a good question to take. Um, what do you expect? Um, not from the pastor. Uh, that was really a great sermon, and I said it's awesome. But what do you expect of God? Uh, I'll talk some about time about what He expects of us. I mean, I saw a lot of expectations in my life the last three or four days. I mean, I uh, I was out of town four or five days. I went to help a friend move. Uh, I had to fly down south to to do that, but. Um, you know, when I pull up to the South Bend Airport and there's an opening right there in the carport for me to park my new car under, I want to be very careful. I'm not preaching the false prosperity gospel and said I deserve that. But I thank my God for that. Because I had shorts on and I didn't want to walk a couple hundred yards. It was 35 degrees here. Okay? It was 85 in Florida. Okay? It was great. Um, did I expect to have an open seat on a plane that was 99.999% filled? Got to stretch out a little bit. Got to work on my sermon a little bit. Um, did I expect to have a great flight? I did. God blesses me. Um, I always pray a funny way, and this is, you got to do your own thing. But I always pray, and, and Kathleen and I had done this for years. I still do. It. When I'm on that taxiway, I, I this is my prayer. Don't adopt it. You got to have your own. Prayer. I believe there's an angel in that front of that plane, an angel on that wing on the back, and there's two angels on the wings, and there's angels behind those pilots and those flight attendants, and that's a holy presence in that tube we call a jet engine. And as that plane is soaring down that runway, I pray that. That will get me there. But I also want to say that I also said, Lord, if it doesn't go that way, I'm still in your hands, and I, and I, I look forward to seeing you. That hasn't happened yet. So I'm, I'm always careful. Now, someone said, well, wait a second. You're kind of praying the other way. No, I'm still praying for that safe flight and all that. I'll share one more expectation. We'll move on to Peter. 
I was with my friend, and um, we went out for a wonderful Italian dinner, and we're coming back, and um, they said, um, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry for my ice cream, but there's no ice cream places around here. I go, that's not true. I believe there is. And I started praying for one. And I said, Jesus, if there's no ice cream place, then we, we're just not meant to have ice cream. So it wasn't like, I want this or else. I don't know how you pray, but I never demand anything, my God. And five minutes down, it was the most loveliest place that was packed with the most loveliest ice cream. And my friend looked over me like, oh, my goodness. So, again, I don't want to just say that we pray for things like that, but... And it was always, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you for, uh, believe me, coming back from Florida with all that traffic from Atlanta through Chattanooga and Nashville, we had our problems too, okay? Five extra hours of not moving at all, spring breakers, it's not always perfect, but, but what, do you ex what do you expect of God? What do you ask when you pray? I want to talk a, a little just briefly about Peter, a man who came to expect a lot, maybe not at first. Um, and I want to look at it from the perspective of Peter as a person, Peter as being passionate, Peter as being purposeful, and finally, quickly, Peter as the preacher. I believe each of those elements are in all of us. We're not putting Peter on a pedestal and say, he's this hero, we're not, because I expect the same things of all of us in your own way. Um, you're a unique person of God. You can be passionate to share the God. You know, it's interesting. Did you pick up that the first two songs were about praising God? Peter suddenly went through a massive growth. And we'll talk about, about praising God and getting comfortable. Um, you know, it made me think about that. I, I'm, I was at home a couple weeks ago, and, I, and I'm, start, I'm writing this this Christian song on acoustic guitar, and it's basically, I, sh I want to raise my voice and sing, and I want to lift up my heart to my king. And then there's this third verse that says, and I don't fear anything. And let, me, let me just talk for a moment about that. I'm not afraid to go like this. I'm not afraid to go like that. I'm not afraid to raise my voice. I'm not afraid to close my eyes. And yet some people... Are, they st and I struggle with that. And I know there's a lot of people who struggle with that. It doesn't mean you have to go like that or like that. You have to praise God in your own way. But I love that, that you can't let fear get the best of you. If you want to raise your hand in song, do that. If you want to reach out like that, if you want to go like that, it's however what's on your heart. Sometimes I like to just stand and close my eyes. And I just want, again, I just want to sing with you all and praise God. You know, and a lot of people say, well, yeah, Pastor, we'll get to that when we take our last breath. <clears throat> no, no, no. We should be praising him now like will we, we will be praising him in eternity because we're already in eternity. So, again, I'll preach on that some other time. But, again, um, and then I think the final verse was surrender to him everything. In that moment of praise and singing him, we should let go of everything. What will people think of me? Let go of it. Don't, I mean, don't just do it to do it. Do it because that's what your heart tells you to. Some people, I kind of move a little bit. If the, if the cat tune is catchy, or the, I kind of move a little bit to that. Some people clap their hands. But again, I loved how, I hope you picked up on a, a couple of those songs today. Let's talk about Peter. Uh, we're in Acts 3. And we've seen Peter go through just so much. Now, two weeks ago, we talked about Peter healing the lame man. And you remember I asked you the question, do you, do you believe that that same physical miracle can happen in your church? And I, some reason, and I asked you last week, do you believe, because we went backwards to chapter 2, 47. We talked about, about the, the, the word and the prayer and communion and breaking, breaking the bread. And I said, do you still believe that the signs and the wonders and the miracles are available in the church today? I didn't ask you to raise your hands or not, but I hope a lot of people, yeah, that's still possible. That's, that's for God to determine, but I'm, oh, I'm open to that. Um, I'm not saying, oh, pastor's been doing a great job, so I'll open up an ice cream shop for him and they'll have great. 
I don't believe that's the way that relationship works. I just believe God is good. And yeah, for some reason, he gave us five extra hours in traffic. You know? But for two people to drive home 21 and a half straight hours with stopping, that's a Holy Spirit moment for me. I mean, how, how did we do that? I, I can't explain that. So we talked about, do we believe that these things are still going? I believe that. I want to read just a couple uh, words here from Acts 3. Uh, again, I asked you last week, I hope you brought your Bibles. I'm going to keep asking you that. Eventually, I'm going to ask you to raise your Bibles. If not today, okay? But um, I know we can get really... Oh, let Pastor bring his old Bible. You know, we got words on the thing, you know, but I uh, hope you brought your old Bible. Uh, I'm going to read it from Acts 3.11, and I think I'm going to teach just a moment as I read on some of these verses. Remember, Peter has just healed this man. Jesus has brought a physical healing to this lame man who was lame from birth. There was, the bone structure was no, and Jesus healed him. Verse 11, Acts 3, 11. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. Again, we're in the temple. Let's remember that when Jesus healed people, what was the point of that? Not the healing, but the healing led to the word of God and the healing led to walking with Jesus Christ. And the true believers stayed there. The other people, oh, just give me another miracle, another miracle, another miracle, another miracle. And as I was telling you about going to Florida, I'm not saying just pray for those things so you keep getting things that had nothing to do with that. I truly believe that God will supply the things that he knows we want. So they're in their temple. Verse 12, when Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? Peter's saying, it's, it's not by us. God did this. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, he's talking to the Jewish people here has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked him that a murder be released to you. Notice that Peter doesn't just talk about Jesus, 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 all the good Je He's getting into this middle thing I'll talk about that. A lot of us testify on the love of Jesus, but we don't get into the sin issue. It's tough. Believe me, I've gone through, it's tough to get into that sin issue before you invite them to know Jesus in your heart. A lot of, it, a lot of people today who call themselves even juggles, they'll, they'll preach the love of Jesus and you can accept him today, but they don't deal with the middle half, the chasm, the divide. It's that there's sin. And that's why I always love the evangelists like Billy Graham. He wasn't afraid to talk about S-I-N because many people didn't know that. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. Verse 14, you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. Remember the story of Barabbas, Jesus? They chose Barabbas. You disowned, oh, verse 15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witness to this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and no was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. You know, it's interesting. It's been a week. I don't know. I don't watch much media. I really don't. But, uh, and I'm not going to spend my, but uh, there was an incident this week, if, if, you, if you're familiar, and, and it's probably funny that billions and billions and billions of tweets and texts and Billions of hours were probably wasted on a guy slapping another guy, okay? And there was talk of God and God and God's going to do it. But you know what? I didn't pick up, and again, I'm, I love people, and I, we were taught it's the son. I love people, but there wasn't any talk of Jesus Christ. Notice that Peter's talking about Jesus Christ here, you know? There are people who talk about God that don't serve the same God as we do. Even the Jewish people are struggling with that. Jesus is still a prophet to them. Other religions, like a Muslim faith, believe there's Allah. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We still want to show love and respect to them. But I thought that was interesting, you know. The devil's there, God, 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 but there was no Jesus Christ. I digress from that and move on. Verse 16, by faith in the name of Jesus, 
This man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name in the faith that comes to him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Let me stop there just for a moment. Peter, Peter is very assertive here. Peter is very aggressive. Peter, in some way, is progressive. And it's not just his attitude or his care. This is what has happened. He already had the love of Jesus. This is what has happened with the Holy Spirit coming alive in his life. God is using his ability. I don't want to just talk a little bit about Peter. And again, as we go through these, I, th I, part of my prayer is that there is a little bit of that Peter in you that is still not developed. And it's true of me as well. As I was talking about how I praise God in song, there was a time that I, if I did this and I closed my mind and I, oh my God, people will make fun if I do that. You know, I'm learning, I'm growing even as a pastor. But let's look at Peter as a person. I mean, if I was to say, what do we know about Peter? We'd say, well, he was Galilean, he was uneducated, he was Jewish, he was a fisherman, um, he was a husband, he had a home. Remember, they lowered the layman through the thatched roof. Peter had a home. He was a believer, became a pop. He was the first one to say, I believe Jesus, you are the Messiah. Um, and yet we know what happened on Holy Thursday night. He denied he sinned three times. Early in the morning. We don't know the exact time. I want to say maybe 3 a.m. It was good Friday morning. Jesus was the interior, and he denied him. And then he saw Jesus' face. Wow. And then that morning, his Lord was crucified. We don't really know this, but let's remember when Mary Magdalene knocked on the door Easter Sunday, he has arisen. Did the apostles say, yes, we told him? They were doubtful. They were scared to death. What was Peter's weekend like at Good Friday morning, knowing that his Lord was crucified? He's dead. Wow. And then Saturday. And then Sunday morning, Jesus finds Peter. And he has a private time. And it's not in Scripture. We'll just know that Jesus appeared to Peter. And it was a time, it had been a time of private repentance and confession. I believe it was a time that Peter wailed and, Lord, I broke. And, and I've been there, and I hope. I've asked this question. When was the last time you had a great, heartful cry with Jesus? Now, that doesn't mean create tears. It doesn't mean it has to be hours. But, man, we, I broke your heart. And Jesus forgave him. Jesus spent that time with him. I think it was about a 52-hour period. About 3 a.m., Good Friday morning. To about 7-ish a.m. He saw Mary Magdalene first. He saw the ladies. And then he found Peter. He found Peter. He knew Peter was struggling. He's God. He knows it. Peter had been struggling, not knowing my Lord is gone. I'm never going to see him again. I think that's what he's thinking. Because they were still... Now, he didn't rise, but he did. I mean, look at a man from that moment of Good Friday to, eat, to Pentecost Sunday is another 52 days. So there's 52 hours with Peter from early third, from Good Friday morning to Easter Sunday time with you. 52 days from the moment he denied him till the Pentecost Sunday came and his life was changed. 52 days. And we think, that flies by, you know. Right now we're ready for spring. You know, before you know it, we're going to be talking. Fall's going to be here, isn't it? Spring and summer just flies by. But during that 52 days, Jesus, Peter spent 40 days with Jesus. Peter spent 10 days in prayer. And of course, the two days was Holy Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So 52 days. And Peter's life has gone from before and after. Yeah, I was a believer, but now Peter's professing his faith and his love for Jesus. That's a challenge to us. Why don't we do that? I know I love you, Jesus. I know I talk a little bit about you, but I really don't evangelize your name. I think, it, I think it's a, an issue that we all have to look at as, as Christians in this country. You know, the song... What's the song? I want to tell everybody I'm a Christian. Again, sometimes you don't have to use your mouth. People see, I hope people see the Christian in you without even opening this thing. I hope they see it in your heart and your actions. You know, there's a scientific study, and I don't put a lot of faith in this, but 
They said, when somebody do something, 7% of the effectiveness is the words, 35% of that is the attitude, and the other 58% is the action itself. Now, you think about that from the standpoint of, if you reach out with love to somebody, and you open that door, and your heart is caring, there's that nonverbal action of doing a good deed, your heart is in the right place, and you might say good morning. Again, only 7% of that is effective in the word. What does that tell you? The other 93% of do is in your heart and what you do to people. It's not the blah, 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 blah. You know, we sometimes think it's all words. It isn't words. But Peter had gone through that. I hope in some ways you're going through that. God is stretching you. As we, as we pray for a dear family today that's in Florida, God will touch them and comfort and stretch them through a very difficult moment that I can't explain. God is taking a group of youth that we know and we worship, and he'll be with them. He won't let them go, but we have to pray that they'll embrace him too. And you've been there maybe in different situations, maybe not in a life and death situation, and you trust in God. So this is a little about Peter the person. I mean, if we're going to chart that, I mean, he's Peter is soaring. Peter, and we'll we'll continue to see that. Sometimes we're like this: we plateau, out, don't we? We let fear in the world get the best of us, and uh, we have our moments and up and down. But are are you are are we really soaring in our faith? And what I'm talking about is that Holy Spirit coming alive. Let's talk about Peter being passionate. That passion was the love and being in love with our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think politi Peter was politically incorrect. Oh, I don't want to harm the Jewish people. And I don't want to hurt the Romans. i got to be careful how I walk. And as we were talking in our Sunday school today, we have to be loving. That doesn't mean we can't speak the words of Jesus. That doesn't mean we can't disagree. But we need to be loving. And of course, as if you were with us this morning, that love is totally radical and revolutionary. It's heavenly. It's not an earthly love. I'm going to love somebody who slaps me in the face? Are you kidding me? It is radical. It is revolutionary to turn the other cheek. But that's what Jesus is teaching us. That heavenly love, not that worldly love. You know, didn't say, oh, that's okay the other night. We'll all get together and God will work this out. And I'm thinking, like, I think it's I think he's in the right direction, but he, you know, it's kind of like I can't I have a problem when people do that. It's like um, we almost use God the wrong way. But Peter's passionate here, you can see that. He's not afraid to talk about sin. What's the purpose when we do that? We hope that the Holy Spirit will convict people. Let's remember, Peter is not just going through change here. Peter has gone through a transformation that he's never going back. Now, will Peter make mistakes? Of course, Peter's going to make mistakes. This group of apostles is going to struggle a lot because they're Jewish coming into a brand new thing called Christianity, coming into a brand new thing called the church. And they've grown up being Jewish. So there's a learning curve there, and God knows that. Peter got into that problem with food, and Paul had to rebuke him. And then they eventually realized, you know, it really isn't all about the laws of the food. The law is important, but grace and mercy. So that, ch that church is going, man, it's, they're going through a lot of ups and downs. Well, wait a second. I've been a fisherman for 50 years, loving God, going to the temple and following the law of Moses. And now this Lord and Savior comes in, and it's about mercy and grace. So you can understand how they're kind of, wait, where, where, where am I on that? But Peter was transformed. I totally believe if anybody gives their life to Jesus Christ, that life should be transformed from that moment on. Do you know everything? No. Are you going to learn everything immediately? No. You're gonna, how many years... Has it taken you to get you where you are today from that first moment you declared your life to Jesus Christ? I want to meet the person who has it all figured out that first day. You don't. You don't even know what this thing is. I, I didn't. 
I didn't know that certain books were before other books. I think I think I knew there was a gospel and there was four there and there was a Paul and there's a Genesis and a Revelation. Revelation. I, I didn't know. I don't know. I'm still, we're all learning. But Peter's passionate. I want to tell you about Jesus. I want to tell you about what you've done. And that's a, that's a challenge to us the same way. You know? There's people that we love in our life and we talk about them, but we don't talk enough about Jesus. And please, folks, please, there's a, God's got me going through that. It, maybe I was there now and I'm here, but I think he wants me to grow at levels too. Not just preach about it on Sunday, but to be willing to speak to, to the person on, on the plane next week. Not to hit them on the head with the Bible and be preaching. You know, I've got you for a couple of... You know, it's funny when you introduce yourself to somebody in play. Hi, I'm Pastor David. And the first thing... Oh my goodness, the guy's going to preach to me for the next three hours. You know? no, and I said, I won't do that, okay? Uh, get settled in, have your cup of... Well, there's no, there's no free stuff on that plane, but anyway. Um, uh, um, and and, and we'll, we'll usually share that. So Peter was passionate. He was more passionate here than he was two, three, four months ago. But let's remember what's happened. Jesus has gone to Calvary. That's happened. Jesus is resurrected, and the resurrection is, that resurrected life, that eternalness, is in him. He's bold, not pushy bold, but humble bold. He's trusting in the Lord. He didn't take credit for any of this. Verse 17, I'm in Acts 3. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance as you... Did, you, did he take his life in his own hands by saying that? Possibly. Someone could have killed him for that. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets. Saying that this Messiah would suffer. Repent then. Ah, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Here's the sin issue. Repent. And turn to God. So that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come to the Lord. He didn't spend 30 minutes in a sin problem. You may not have to with somebody. But often, I'll spend 20 minutes telling you how good Jesus is to me. I'll avoid the sin issue. And you know, you, he can be your Lord. Come to church. So Peter doesn't spend forever, but he's bold in that. Verse 20, and that, he, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, the end of the world. We're in the last days. We're close to the last days. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through the prophets. Everything that's been written in this book will come true, even the... Do you believe that? That's a yes or no question. Do you believe that every prophecy, there's a lot of prophecy in the minor and the major prophets and revelation that has not, I believe, everything will be worked out. You know, when Isaiah said, said when Isaiah said, there's going to be a virgin who has a child called Emmanuel, do you realize it was 700 years before that prophecy came true? It came true, didn't it? And while the apostles are thinking, he's coming back tomorrow, they never would have figured it's been 2,000 plus years. Wow. Jesus wanted you there too. Jesus wanted you to be born. Jesus wants this little baby. We prayed for you last. Jesus wants this little baby to be born. But if the rapture came today, that child will go to heaven too. God's got, God's got that in the palm of his hand. And he knows in the ups and downs and all that. And good. He wants that. Thank goodness that Jesus shows grace to young children, doesn't he? Thank God that he shows grace to all of us, too, right? right? We go through the same door, don't we? We all go through the cross of Calvary. I don't get a special route to heaven. Verse 20, as I said, For Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. Verse 24, indeed, beginning with Samuel. We're just starting our Thursday night. We started, Chris started 1 Samuel. Great study, looking forward to that on Zoom. 
Samuel said, And all the prophets who have spoken have foretold these days. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, Through your offspring all peoples on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to, to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Go back to verse 22. Deuteronomy 18, 15. Moses talked of a prophet that would come. He's referring to Jesus. But Moses meant a lot more than the typical prophet like Ezekiel or Samuel. Well, remember what, remember what the Pharisees asked John the Baptist. Are you Elijah? No, are you the prophet that is to come? So the Jewish people were expecting Jesus to come. And I could spend an hour, what did they do when he finally got there? They didn't believe in him. The Jewish people today still believe that Jesus is what? A prophet. God will take care of that in, the, in, in, in all. Continue to pray for Israel. Peter. Peter's a person. He's not perfect. Peter's passionate now through the holy, through the boldness of the Holy Spirit. I do believe God puts us, puts people in, in your life to share the gospel. You can do it in two minutes. You don't need an hour. Um, but Peter was also purposeful. And that's what went, happened through the three years. It took the cross. It took the resurrection. It took Jesus 40 days continuing to teach them. But Peter is on a totally different purpose here. With other, what, what is Peter really trying to do here? To say, I'm right and you're right. Peter really wants people to come to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Peter wants them to have the blessings of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peter wants them to have a place, even though he probably would, hasn't figured out John 14. Peter wants them to have a mansion in heaven. Peter wants that. And that's a challenge for us. For those five people or ten people I ask you to pray for, for those family members, here's a question that came to me a long time ago, and it was from a great evangelist in the 18th called D.L. Moody. And he said, those love and would you love to spend eternity with them? Well, of course, that's my dad and my mom. Will you do your work to help them come to know Jesus? Now, I know there's some characters in our life. I don't know, you know. Um, but think about those people. And it can be the guy in the street corner as well. But I totally believe everybody has family who does not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. They may live in Alaska. They may, they may be overseas. You can tell. Will we share? This is... God loves you, create, will we sit, the sin issue, you can know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know when we wrap up our services here online, we'll wave the online people here, um, uh, I don't take 40 minutes to make an altar call, it's a couple minutes. Um, I ask people to say a simple prayer. I could spend an hour teaching them about that, that's another time for another lecture, but um, I want to walk them through that steps. Peter is, is purposeful here. Do I want to say he wants everyone to come to Jesus Christ? Yes, he does. Is that going to happen? No. What was Jesus' batting average of bringing people to Christ during his life? And he's saying, man, I know some ball players that have a higher batting. But, but eventually, you know where I'm going. What was Paul's, what was Paul's uh, percentage? And it's not about, but just kind of think about that. I don't know it. I mean, there's probably people that you've shared the gospel with who may remember you in their last breath. I believe that. But once that thought got, David, you need to be purposeful and tell them about the love of Jesus. If they, it's not personal. For years, they don't like me. It had nothing to do with, they're rejecting Jesus. And if you've seen that work in your life, I'll hang on to those few people who are with the Lord today. I'm not going to worry about the 80 who may have, because it's possible in the end, they have to come to Jesus or not. That's for them to decide.
But I'm not going to be afraid to share that. I think a lot of us are. Peter isn't afraid. Finally, Peter is preaching here. He preached a little in chapter 2. He even talked and preached a little bit in chapter 1. You know, the Bible clearly tells us we are preachers and our teachers. Don't get lost in pastors and evangelists. And I'm the apostle. Those are just titles. You know, each of you, you may never come up here and preach a sermon, but you can be a teacher. In a way, you can be an evangelist. You know, a lot, a lot. Remember I asked you, for our guests here who haven't been with I asked you about six or seven weeks ago, how would you define yourself if somebody says, as a Christian, how do you define yourself? I don't think I said that. But I'm, in other words, I'm so-and-so and I work here and I've got to, no, no, that, that was the, the question. How would you define yourself as a Christian? And I think my answer right now, where I am a beloved child of my Father saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. That's where I'm at right now. But you didn't say the word Christian, David. But you didn't say the word evangelical. I'm struggling with the word evangelical today. Not personally, but I'm struggling with it because of politics. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Because politics has been added on to this. And there shouldn't be any of that. You know? I pray for You may have these in your family. I hope that you don't do this, but you all know somebody... One's a Democrat and one's a Republican, and they both think that they're going to heaven and the other isn't. I mean, I've prayed with people on the phone at Billy Graham for years. Will you pray with me for my sister who's going to hell because she's a Democrat? I go, wait a second. I can't pray that. Some people have hung up the phone on me. It happens. I want what I want. You know where two or three come together? Don't abuse where two or three come together. The Lord will be there. You got to. What are you praying about? I said, "Is it possible that your your is it possible your sister may be a Democrat and knows the Lord Jesus?" Yeah, it's possible. And I said, "The only excuse she hasn't studied the platform of, of what these leaders stand for." Then I can leave it at that. But you know, we all do that. You know, let's all get in a bunch and you know, we'll all pray the same thing. Peter's preaching here. Peter, Peter's teaching here. Some of you might say, I'm a teacher more than a preacher. That's fine. You can do that. How do you relate to Peter in this? Maybe you have another saint. Maybe it's John that you relate to. Maybe it's Mary Magdalene. Maybe it's Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know? And say, I can really. But I think we can relate to Peter, who has come so far, and you might think, you know, David, my life is kind of, pla I know where I'm going, I'm saved, I love Jesus, but I'm kind of in a static plateau. Pray about that. Pray that the Holy Spirit would come even more alive in you. Wasn't there a song here today about overflowing? What would really happen if the church, beginning with me, overflowed in the Holy Spirit? Well, you know the answer to that. I don't know if every pew would be filled in this country, but more people would come to have heard of Jesus. The gospel, again, the gospel would be shared, not your testimony. That's another thing for another. The gospel of Jesus, that Jesus came, he died for my sin, your sin. He went to the tomb, and he was resurrected. You're going to hear a lot of that in these weeks to come, in this powerful time of year. That from death you came to life. And that resurrected life you have in you. That bold now please know that boldness has humility. There's nothing worse, there's nothing worse than a Christian that's a pain. How do I say that? There's nothing worse than a Christian that's just a pain in the neck, you know? Because it's a bad well, I don't want to be like that. And there was times when I was like that. Years I was well, I don't want to be like that. So, again, I just want to say, I'm not saying you're safe, but I've been there. I've gone through that. 
Maybe you're at that static and you want God to take you to that next level. As a Christian, he can do that. Is it possible that an unbeliever can come into church today, hear there, and give their life to Christ, and suddenly pass you on that race, and it's not a race, but suddenly take off? Yeah, because they're allowing the Holy Spirit. Maybe for a lot of us, remember there was a point where your life was on fire for Christ, and that light has dimmed, the coals are still embering a little bit. But that's something that we should pray for each other. This time of year, I think especially, as spring is opening up, you know, we talk about the birds singing, but are we really singing? We talk about new life. God, there's new life in all of us that hasn't been opened up. It's still kind of in a little cocoon thing. Are we going to allow that to really open up? And you don't have to come up here and do it. Peter was a person imperfect. Peter was passionate about Jesus. And yet he had gone through some hills and valleys, as you have too. Peter had a purpose to point them to Jesus. I truly believe if our only thing, if this is not my ultimate, I truly believe that if we point them to Jesus and get that person into Jesus' hands, I can love them, but I should probably let them go if you know what I mean. Nothing more than mess. But if, I, if we can get someone into the hands of Jesus, wow. If you've ever done that, you know what I'm talking about. It might take years. Keep praying. Don't stop. They may not get into the hands of Jesus until the good thief in the final breath of his life would say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've made a mistake. There's a movie out. I'll say this. I'll close. There's a movie out. It's uh, uh, Do You Believe? And it deals with 12, and it deals with the power of the cross. And in that, there's a, there's a, a paramedic who's helping this guy who's has this 80 ton thing on he's basically not dying okay and he doesn't and the man walks him through jesus christ and he makes a commitment to and i know it's just a film but he makes a commitment to jesus christ that man like the good thief it took him his whole life to come to that moment but two 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 minutes later it would have been too late are we purposeful enough to tell the love of god not just for us but God has that same love for you, my friend. Are we able to talk about the sin element without hurting somebody? And will we preach and teach a little more? I'm not asking everybody to be totally Peter-like, but we can learn a lot of things from him. We know he was bold. We know he spoke. We know we got stuck his foot in his mouth, but he got better and his life started to go like that. All the way until he was martyred. Peter knew. Peter, Peter knew how God would work. He didn't have all the answers. And as we go to prayer, let's never forget that behind it is it's it's the resurrection that was still the key thing. No one had ever, that had never happened. Jesus is the first fruits. But that same life lives in us today. Do you believe that? I mean, I totally believe if that plane had taken off the other day and it didn't get me to Florida, I was going to be okay. Of course, this church wouldn't be okay because we won't go there, but God is good. But you would, but you would have been okay anyway. God would get you. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for prayers today, Lord, that uh, break our heart. But we thank you for prayers that lead us to a great Lord. And I'm glad, Lord, at times I could say, Lord, I have nothing else but to say, but I need you. I need you to help a family out. I need you to help a, another family out, Lord. I need you to help a loved one out. Father, as we continue to go into this Easter season, let us remember that it's not about getting things. It's not about just doing services, Lord, but the power and the joy of knowing you deeper. And I want everybody to know, I want to feel that love deeper. I want to be held closer.
But I also want to hug Jesus a little tighter. And Lord, we can do that right now as we close. And there's an altar up here. If there's anybody who needs to give that time to Jesus. Maybe they want to hug him because they've made a mistake. Maybe they want to hug him just to say, I love you, Lord. Maybe there's somebody online who doesn't know Jesus. And they're hearing all about Easter and the birds are singing and why they're not reawakened. Well, they can know that right now. I don't want to say it's simple, Lord. But they can just ask Jesus into their heart. And say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I do believe the Father sent the Son. And He died and He rose for me. And I want that, Lord. I want you in my life. I've tried everything. I've tried the booze and the narcotics and the women and the money and the sex. I've tried it all and I'm still lost. My friends... If you're there, you can come to Jesus and say, will you be the Lord of my life? Say it in your own special prayer. Make it childlike. You don't have to preach for an hour. It can be a few sentences. And Lord, we believe your word that they will come to know. Many people, my friends and brothers, they came to know Jesus the same way. Maybe it was at a revival meet. Maybe it was in a cornfield. Maybe it was just on their own, taking a walk. Maybe it was actually at this church, Lord. But you opened up your heart and you came in and you live in them totally. Father, as we move into this Easter season, those people that are on our, on our hearts, help us to be Peter-like, to be purposeful in you, to be passionate about you, and to either preach or teach a few, maybe it's a few words in the gospel that you but we thank you for how you're going to continue to move in our lives. Thank you for your grace and mercy. And Father, help us just to continue this time as we worship you. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you love us even when we're not perfect. Pray this in Jesus' name.
people today at church services across this world will come to that point, that burden. They'll give that burden to you and they'll know you for eternity. I believe that. I don't know what that number is. I'm not supposed to. But is it 100,000? Is it a million people? But I do believe it happens one soul at a time, one precious friendship with you, Lord. You've already granted it. You've given grace and mercy to those people who took that burden of sin and they gave it to you on the cross. And I pray that will continue in the, in the weeks to follow as we go through this very special time of spring, this Easter season, Lord. And you will forgive, you will revive, and you will, will reawake all of us in a new way, in a special way, in more of a bold, maybe a more humble, a more loving way, Lord. I can't explain how you work, Lord, and I'm glad because I'm not God, but you are. Thank you that you're more than a friend, your Lord and Savior. You hear our prayers, you guide us, you teach us. Thank you, Father. May we continue just to love you throughout this day and share that love with those in need. And as that song says, we don't know if you're going to come tonight like a thief in the night, Lord. We don't want it to be too late. So help us to just share the love of Jesus. Pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.